Welcome back to Life Love Shopping. I'm Rice Pascal along with Amber Milton. You know the countdown clock is ticking. The new year is approaching and you know what that means? New Year's resolutions. Oh boy, but do New Year's resolutions really work or are they just an exercise in self-hate? Here to break it down for us is <laughs> clinical psychologist, Dr. Chloe Carmichael. Hi, Dr. Chloe, Hi. welcome to the show. Thanks ladies, it's great to be with you. Okay, so I have a question. Do you think that New Year's resolutions are even a good idea? Yes, they are a good idea. I heard what you said about self-hate. So <laughs> it's really good to have goals. It's really good to have clarity. Like they say, we miss 100% of the shots we don't take. So even if we don't always meet our New Year's resolutions, we should try. Self-hate would be if we quit even trying, if we wouldn't even acknowledge to ourselves what we'd like to do. Got it. Okay. Wow. I mean, I feel like I never can manage to keep one. Can you? <laughs> no, I can't. Ugh. How can we make it constructive? Is there something specific, a way mm. we need to word it? Yeah. So a lot of people are into this smart thing where they say the goal has to be specific and measurable. And that's fine if it works for people. But I say it's also okay to have it be general. So for example, if you wanted to have a New Year's resolution about fitness, you could say, I'll work out three times a week for mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Or you could say fitness is my theme word for 2023 and maybe you get a wall calendar that just has pictures of fitness and you just keep it in your mind. Either way is really okay. Also, if you do find yourself to the point of being constructive, slipping a little bit sometimes, yeah. what I would say is it's important to congratulate yourself on the awareness. Because if you think about it, awareness of a mistake is a lot better than non-awareness. Mm. And so when you catch yourself, you just say, oh, good for me for noticing. It's obviously on my radar. Now, what can I do to support myself to do it better next time? Oh, I love that. I feel like I, though, will like, my fitness goals, and then I'll celebrate with a cookie. So it really kind of, it, it, it <laughs> really, it, 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 it's not a good situation. Well, speaking of celebrating, you do have to celebrate your victories. Oh, so yeah. a lot of people are shy to do that because they don't want to toot their own horn, but celebrating even small victories keeps you motivated. I okay. love that. Now, do you think it's a better idea? Because a lot of us will share resolutions. Is it better just to keep them to ourselves? You know, that's a tough one. So some people do need to keep it to themselves. If you share it with people, of course, make sure that it's support of people who will really cheer you on but even if you don't tell other people make sure you tell yourself by for example putting post-it notes on your mirrors making a screensaver on your phone or oh, even if you want to learn a new language yeah. signing up for a class finding some way to get your environment to start reminding you of this goal yeah because I've heard like uh, when if you're telling someone it does help with keeping you accountable too. kind of knowing someone's like hey how are you doing with your resolution but on the flip side you don't want to have that guilt if yeah. you're not going to the gym getting your exercise on. exactly <laughs> or you're just paying for the gym subscription or the yeah. language learning subscription we, we've all been there we've all been there is there a way maybe if we fall off track that we can get back on track with our resolutions exactly so that's why it's so much better if we are compassionate about noticing when we're off track so if you notice you're off track instead of saying like oh I'm so lazy I'm such a failure look what I did again you would say oh it's really good that I noticed this it's obviously on my radar and I'm thinking about it. Now, how can I have that discomfort propel me to do something better? That's kind of even like the theme of my book about anxiety is that there's a healthy function to anxiety, which is to stimulate preparation behaviors. So just like when we feel ourselves falling short of our goals, that kind of down feeling, there's actually a positive function to it, which is to help us to say, I don't like this feeling. I want to mm. do something differently. I love it. Wow. Turn that frown upside down, girl, and get back on, get back on the bandwagon. Um, Dr. Chloe, we know that you have a fabulous book out. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. And there's a copy here for both of you. You're so so I wanted to share that Thank with you. you. It's Nervous Energy, Harness the Power of Your Anxiety. And I wrote it because I know that there's this big epidemic of anxiety. Absolutely. Americans are really worried about anxiety. And they tend to get anxiety about anxiety, where they say, oh, I have, I have anxiety. And then they get nervous about that. And what I want people to know is that there is a healthy function to anxiety, which is to stimulate preparation behaviors. Mm -hmm. So the book has nine tools where if you're feeling anxious, you could say, how could I channel this little tickle yeah. of energy from Mother Nature into doing something that will actually help me? So they need to get the books. They can learn those do. tools. Yeah. Dr. Chloe, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for you at home. If you want to learn more, you can check out her book, Nervous Energy, Harness the Power of Your Anxiety. Thank you, Dr. Chloe. Thanks, ladies. Thank you.